Hi you all, welcome back. This is session nine, first part, Gaussian processes, okay? So today we're going to talk about this uh, really interesting idea of um, extending the spatial inference that we uh, have been working through these uh, sessions to something a little bit more advanced. So all the things that we have been doing, for instance, uh, we have some pair of data, X, I, Y, I, right? Where one is our data point and the other one is uh, either the label or some value that we are trying to do regression on. And you may think that this YI is actually just the result of some process F that we apply to, to this uh, uh, data point, right? And all the things that we have been doing so far is trying to um, approximate this F with some uh, set of parameters and then using those uh, parameters uh, through the learning framework that we have been doing so far. But what if we actually try to do something um, more general and instead of approximating this f with some parameters, we actually try to learn some distribution of f instead of uh, distribution even over the parameters that we already set. So what these Gaussian processes are asking is uh, try to approximate then or learn a distribution uh, over the the different functions, okay? So, so the idea is to learn some distribution of f, and this f will depend on my data. This is a big x, and uh, and all my my y. So that is also kind of a big y, and. This is basically the idea of when I'm trying to do some, some inferences, using this distribution over here to make the prediction by doing my marginalization over F. That is, that is like, given this distribution that I learned over all possible uh, functions, just use and do an, kind of an average over all of those, over all those distributions, right? So my, my prediction, for instance, on Y star, given some, X star that I'm just trying to predict and my data, my training data, is nothing else but the integral of my predictive posterior PY star given F and X star, right? So I'm just trying to predict using this F. But now the thing is I, I want to use all possible Fs, right? So I will just weight it with this distribution over here. So what I'm saying is just see how likely it is and then just add all the results of those predictions through those possible Fs over here and then you just get your, your inference, right? So in some sense, what we are trying to, to say here is infer some uh, P of F giving my data instead of the normal um, uh, P of theta giving my data, my data right? So this is the thing that we have been doing so far. I set the family and then I just try to infer the theta, but now I just want to infer all the possible Fs instead. And that is a Gaussian process. So if we try to define this, this uh, GP is basically um, over a set of points. So you have your, your data points, x1 up to xn. And, uh, sorry, this should be a big N. B N okay. Um, what we are trying to do is to define a joint over these uh, points. So my G P is is then this distribution over here. A P of x x one up to f of x n. So th these are the the outputs, right? My y's. And this is approximately Gaussian, right? So that means like this joint here will be a Gaussian distribution of F with some parameters, let's call them just mu and, and sigma, right? So these mu and sigma, they are functions of X. So uh, normally this uh, is just a simple F of big X, uh, sorry, mu of uh, big X, that means all my data. And this covariance matrix over here, um, it is defined through a kernel function. So I will have some kernel xi, xj, right? That just 
defines how uh, or what is the relation between all my data points that I that I was given for for training. Um, so imagine like we can think for one example of these for regression, for instance. And in my regression case, my f of x again is going to be a normal. So this is um, a Gaussian process, right? And this is going to have some mean m of x and some standard deviation k of x and x prime over here. So I'm just defining my, my Gaussian process. So by saying this, I'm saying that I'm going to define this joint over here. That is all the f's applied to my x's and that is going to be normally distributed. And um, my m of x in this case, we can just simply define it as the expected value of my function. So I just take the expected values of the of the results over here. On my kernel, for instance, it can be uh, varies. So this is the expected value of the square difference, but this is uh, in matrix form. So I'm going to transpose this. So uh, this difference, and then I just want to uh, multiply this by the x prime. So I'm seeing how far my x is with respect of its mean and how my other point is with respect of its mean, the mx prime. And then I'm just going to transpose this just to make the, the down multiplication over here. So again, this is just my Gaussian process then. This p of x, give, uh, sorry, p of f given x is a normal, right? This is approximately a normal. With uh, m, this mean and this uh, standard deviation k over here, right? Um, so imagine like now we want to make some, some predictions. So what will happen, right? Um, let me divide this over here. And what we will have now is that we have this D as my, my, my data points, right? Uh, let me just write it over here. So I have this D as my data point. And now what I want to add is uh, added to this D, I will have some, um, let's say that these are noise free and then we can see the version with noise. And what will happen is like, I want to predict for some value x star, right? Or a set of values. And now I want to see what, like what my output, uh, the output f star is, okay? So I'm asking, so what will happen for this new data point, assuming what is this set of distributions over here? Uh, so sorry, set of functions over here. So what we have is that we have this f and f star, and I'm just going to stack it and think Okay, I want to, since this is a joint, right? Now I'm just adding a, a, a new point over here. So now I want to jointly predict this. And this again is just going to be a normal, just that I will stack these uh, parameters over here. So um, this is going to be um, my my means, right? Let's call it mu and this mu star. And I'm going to have my case over here. So let me define this in a block notation and I'm going to tell you what they are. So K star, K star transpose and K star star. So this is just the, the covariance matrices with respect of each of those. So um, my K is the evaluations of the kernel with respect of X. So this is an N by N uh, matrix, right? Given by the data over, uh, sorry, by the data over here. And this K star, it's the evaluation of the kernel with respect of my data and the testing data. So this is just trying to see how this data relates with this prediction over here. So that means like I can do more than one simple uh, point prediction over here. So this is going to be n times n star when, where n star is the size of this uh, data, testing data. And then k star star, it's uh, the application of this kernel within the testing data. So I'm seeing how my testing data correlates with, with itself. And this is just um, n star by n star 
and from once I have this joint over here, I can define then uh, what I'm interested in because I'm looking, if you remember, for I'm looking through this p of f given p of f, right? So I'm I'm looking through through this p of f over here. Um, so given that I can define this p of f star, give it my x star, give it my data x, and uh, my function f as a normal of f star with some mean and covariance matrix, right? Because I know that this should be a normal, right? Since this is a normal too, and this is a normal too. So this multiplication should be also a normal. Um, from here, we can get that this parameter. And if you just go back and check those uh, uh, sessions when we were discussing about the, the Gaussians, you can see how you can find uh, and solve for, for a multiplication of Gaussian. So we're not going to do it here, but it, it should be straightforward. So uh, this is the mean with respect of the data plus these covariance matrices that I have over here. So uh, it's going to be K star transpose times K inverse times F minus mu of the data, okay? So I'm just adding to the mean of the data that I will have the information from, from my other distribution over here. Uh, that is the, the training data. Um, sigma star is actually K star star. So my covariance matrix with respect of itself, given the testing data. Um, and then I'm going to adjust it using the information between both of them squared and the information of the uh, training data, right? And finally, you can uh, simply uh, in increase this because I'm assuming that this part over here, the data is noise free. But if you have noise, so with noise over here, so let's say like you have some noisy, noisy data, data set. So what you have is that your predictions are not anymore uh, true, right? Your y's are not f of xi, but you have some epsilon here, such that this epsilon comes from a normal. And they say like you're going to model this, this noise as a, as a distribution that depends on the, on the data point that you have. So that will allow you to have different measures and different noise um, evaluations for each data point. So you can um, infer it in independently. So what this will do is that your covariance over here of y given x, it just becomes uh, this, right? Um, your original k plus some um, i is this uh, sigma square i, y, i. Seems, I'm assuming that noise is independent, right? So I'm just adding it to the diagonal of the covariance. And for all the other uh, parts, I'm assuming that it is not. So you can think of this. And for instance, what will happen is that you have now these Y's, F star, instead of my F's, original F's, right? So I'm just adding this noise over here. And I'm going to assume that this is normally distributed. I'm just going to assume zero mean over here just to simplify the count, but you can go back and do it with these uh, other values over here um, and see what the result is. So you will have some ky um, where this ky is my covariance over here. So let's just call it ky. ky and then I will have k star as before and k star transpose and then k star star. Where these covariances are the, it's, it's the same here, right? The, my my data points, except the first one that is using my my noise, uh, my added noise instead. And as as before, this is also a Gaussian, right? So my final form is also a Gaussian. So I just need to infer these two parameters over here. And what will happen when I have noise is that my mu is going to be my my version of the mu with noise plus these k star transpose ky inverse ky, uh, sorry, y. 
and my covariance over here with noise is my k star star minus the k star t k y inverse uh, k star. So what I'm just uh, changing over here is the uh, the information from the uh, from the variance, as you see. My k is now the k using noise with the added noise that I'm trying to solve. And uh, from the mean, you have this other other term over here that that you will need to solve. But um, it is uh, it, it is there, right? Because I'm going to have this f with noise too. Um, yeah, that's it. So this is kind of uh, the introduction. We will uh, continue and discuss a little bit more about the Gaussian processes, but. Uh, as a summary, what we have over here is that they are just trying to uh, generalize the things that we have been doing. So now I don't have to get a, 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 a particular shape for my distribution, and I just need to give uh, and use the marginalization power over here. So I can just take all possible um, f's with respect of my, of my family of, of functions that I define, okay? so. Uh, we're going to talk in the next part on how to estimate these parameters over here and how do you get the parameters of the of the Gaussian process, okay? 